This is Ignacio Esteban, retired ATF Special Agent with over 26 years of federal law enforcement. Now I'm an author with over 56 books on Amazon. I'm live on Thomas Berryman TV. Okay, we're joined here again by Ignacio Esteban. Uh, he's been a great guest on the show before. And he's he's here tonight. We're going to talk about Victor Bout, as well as some of the one percenter gangs over in America and worldwide. And we'll cover a couple other topics while we're here. Yeah, welcome again. Oh man, great back on your show, Thomas. I uh, I enjoy your your programming and your, and your guests and your content, and I uh, enjoy talking about these issues. Ah, uh, thanks. I'm glad to have you again. I, I just finished watching a couple more you done today with uh, Hollywood Wade. Shout out to Hollywood Wade on Crime Entertainment oh, sure. and William Steele on True Crime. And Yes, great shows, great shows. I've done them also quite a few times. Uh, and, and if you haven't seen them, go check it out. If you like this content, you'll definitely enjoy their shows for sure. Also, uh, as long, also with Thomas too. Yeah, they, they got a lot of great, great stuff. Go check them out as well as Adrian from Invest in Yourself. Oh, yeah. We have another one coming out uh, next week too. We did a great show. So that, oh, that wow. look out for that one coming out. And he's doing a great documentary on the Italian mafia. And I'm, yeah. I'm part of that talking about uh, uh, Castro and the mafia and, and then the rise and the fall of the Italian mafia in Cuba that led to the rise of Las Vegas, you know, wow. Meyer Lansky, Santo Traficante and all that. So we, I, I had a good show with him on that and that's going to be coming out. So yeah, folks look out for that too. There's some good stuff coming out of content. And I want to give a shout out to you for, for doing some great short videos that we had in some of my books. Uh, I was narrating and you putting the, uh, the video matching the audio prison gang killers, and uh, MS-13, Mara Sarathucha, at 13, violent gang, violent, brutal street gangs. And I, I give you an excerpt of it. And then Thomas did an outstanding job matching it. So if you haven't seen it, folks, check it out. It's under, I think, the short section, right? On, yeah. On your YouTube yeah, page? Yeah. yeah, check it out. That's outstanding. I'm going to have a few more coming, too. So, I, Oh, it'll be cool. Thank you, man. I, I think yeah. people will enjoy it. I, I've noticed that the shorts are doing extremely well. Yeah. I've had a few that I did with... Uh, Adrian Martinez, you mentioned one of them about my undercover background and almost 10,000 views already. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. They, they work great. And a few other ones have done it too. He, he did one also, LA Gang Wars and Mass Shootings, and they've done well too. So yeah, I think it's it's fun to watch and people can enjoy it, And then they can read more of the book and get more content. So I think it's a win-win for sure. Yeah, definitely. And you got, for people who don't know, you got 50 books on Amazon now and Go check them out. I've got a few myself. Fifty-six and counting. Fifty-six and counting, Thomas. Fifty-six. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get gonna get a hundred soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm slowing down. Uh, I, I don't think I'll do fifty <laughs> books in again in one year. I think uh, I don't know if you downloaded that book. Uh, how I wrote fifty and probably fifty books in one year. I, I got that one. Yeah. I, I don't think uh, I, it was like a special year. I was able to do that. Yeah. Now all different projects are coming up and everything else. I'm getting busier and busier and busier. I had just retired. I come back, it just hit it right, and I, I felt inspired to write. And as you know, you like to write also. You have to, if, you, if you're a writer out there and you like to write, you know, being inspired and having the subject matter really makes it easier for you. And I, I encourage everybody, and just write. I mean, you're going to make edits, you're going to make changes, and I'm going to like it. But the thing is, I, I don't like physically writing. I like going on the keyboard, right, on my, on my Word doc, right, and just doing it. just makes it easier for me to write. So I just think that's a good way for people just to write, get the ideas, let it start flowing. And then you can make your adjustments later, but get going because if you always procrastinate, oh, I'll do it later. And guess what? It's not going to happen, right? You just got to do it week in and week out. It's like anything else. You say, hey, I'm going to, and also get a fixed time that helped me a lot. You know, this is my writing time, like, like, like almost a job. And this is where I have to do it because if not, something always is going to come up and you're not going to have time to writing. And it's, it's such a great, I, I really enjoy it a lot. And I'm, I'm glad I had this year and year and a half to write because it's really, really, Gives me a lot of satisfaction, fulfillment, in writing, and I think people enjoy the work and gives them also some information too. Yeah, definitely. And your books are straight to the point too, and they're easy to read, and yeah. it's great. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't have a lot of time to read four hundred page books, and yeah. and my whole idea of my books, if you don't know something about subject matter, at, at least you gain information about it, and I have a bibliography where you can look more what you yeah. want to look for, or do you, or some more research and go down. You know, do some more deep dives on the subject matter. Like, hey, I didn't know anything about this certain one percenter group. Why well, do you know much about this Italian mafia group or yeah. what have you? I write about. I think that's what my books are about. Is to it's an intro, information, 
And if that's good for you, that's great. And if you want more, well, hey, I also talk about topical things that we're going to talk about now, Victor Bell. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you called the situation months ago. You wrote a book about it. Yeah. I've read the book. Okay. It's a great read. And thank you. So, so, how did you first come to hear of him? Oh, well, I mean, uh, I, I think when the movie came out, Lord of War, right? Yeah. With Nicolas Cage in, yeah. in 2005. Uh, that was based on his life. And I remember I saw in the movie theater when it came out then, and uh, Ethan Hawke plays the uh, a Interpol agent who's tracking him around the world, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I started doing some diving. And, 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 of course, ATF, Department of Justice, has been watching this guy for years. I mean, he, he is the merchant of death, right? Yeah. And, and, and a little background for your audience uh, in Australia and around the world who doesn't know who Victor Bauer, but I think a lot of people now probably knows what he's, especially all the interviews he's been doing of late, uh, he he really he was former he was part of the Soviet Army Soviet uh, Soviets back in the uh, 70s and 80s, and uh, he became a linguistic specialist. The guy became a master of languages. He he I think mastered over 10 languages from Arabic to Farsi to Portuguese to French to English. Obviously, obviously he knew Russian. I mean he he could he could communicate directly to many many different peoples, which would end up being very useful for him with the collapse of Soviet in 1991. Then he turned his skill sets into becoming a mass international weapons trafficker around the world. And he, and because of his contacts in Angola, he was first on one side, right, arming the communists because they're part of the Soviet Union. And then he changed sides once it collapsed and armed the other side. So he really doesn't care what side you're on. His job was to, and then from Angola, he went to Liberia, Sierra Leone, and he doesn't even care if he could pay him in dollars. He was getting paid in blood diamonds, right? And uh, Charles Taylor, uh, which was one of those atrocities going on there. He got 50 years in the International Criminal Court in De Hague, right? 50 years he has. He's serving. He's never. He's an older guy. He's never getting out. He's a co-conspirator, right? He, he's involved with these guys, supplying them the weapons they use for mass shootings and mass killings. And yet, he just got out. He, yeah. he should never have seen it. I never thought I would see the light of day where I would see that picture. If you haven't seen it yet in the tarmac at the UAE, where Brittany Griner, who, who was... I'm sorry. She was, even though she did have small amount of hashish oil, it doesn't justify her receiving nine years in a Russian camp for that. That's just uh, that's just a tactic, by in my opinion, what I'm seeing from Putin using Americans and other foreigners to gain an advantage to get really bad Russian assets out of out of foreign prisons, and, and that's what he's doing. There's no way around that. That he and, and I hate to say it, you know, President Biden made a big mistake by yeah. uh, exchanging her. Because I, I think that encourages that kind of more behavior with others. Yeah. And an American was left behind, and a Marine named Paul Whelan, who's already done four years. Uh, many people yeah. think on trumped up espionage charges in Russia. So uh, he's a really bad, bad guy who's now back in. And he did an interview when he was released, Thomas, with his first interview that he did after doing almost 15 years. And I'll talk about how he got popped 15 years with uh, uh, Marina Mutina. She was arrested in the United States on espionage charges, being an unregistered uh, Russian agent in the United States. And she did about almost two years in American prison. And they're talking about us in the United States and pretty much being used as propaganda by the Putin regime against the United States. Because it's all lies what they're doing out there. And now he's now he's joined a really hardline right wing party. He just registered. And this, and this is Victor Bao uh, to help promote the war in Ukraine. Because he's he supports it, and what he said during the interview that he believed Putin waited too long. If I was him, I would have invaded sooner because they were weaker, and then and it had been years with uh, Zelensky becoming stronger and stronger. And so he would have invaded Ukraine earlier. So this is what you're dealing with. This guy, very dangerous man, that's back out there. They could try to change the war around. We shouldn't have been because it's a reason why Putin won him out. Right? He's yeah. been doing it for years. He's been in American prison now since 2010, 11. He was convicted in New York. For a reason, his contacts, KGB, he's an asset. He has something he needs if he thinks he can change this around. Yeah. And, and we have to watch out for that. It's a good wow. read. You haven't seen a good read. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people didn't know, you know, how he was how he was popped by by the United States Department of Justice, DA. It, it, it was a, an elaborate sting that started, took for months, late 2007. That cultivated in 2008 in March with his arrest in Bangkok, Thailand. But it, it took uh, cooperators who were with the FARC, which were um, a narco terrorist organization out of Colombia, 
which was at war with the government, trying to overthrow the government, the leftists, right? They were living in the mountains. They, were, they had the cocaine that was being uh, transported and uh, distributed in the United States. So they're involved in, in drug trafficking, firearms trafficking. They're involved in, in many, many things, really bad people, right? So these are cooperators, which I think he never suspected that the Americans will ever have this. So that that really was show what kind of operation to pull this off. And it took months and months to get them out of the shadows. They would meet in Curacao first with, with a go-between, co-conspirator. Then they would meet in Europe, in Romania, and Northern Europe again. And then he felt more confident. Uh, this is according to the what's out there in the indictment and records, what I was reading. Uh, because I don't have any first-hand information, just what I've, I've read and what I've seen and what's, what's come out there. And, and then after that, uh, he felt comfortable enough that he will be on the phone with them talking. He'll give him his personal email. And then he said, hey, you guys say you're higher-ranking FARC members. He had pictures of high-ranking FARC members from Colombia. This is the context he has. It's circle the guys who you are here. And I guess they were. I guess they did. And next thing you know, a few weeks later, they meet in Bangkok, Thailand. He gets wow. them out of the shot. And, they, and, and then in, in a two-hour meeting in a hotel that's recorded, uh, he tells them, what are you looking for? And he's saying, well, we're looking for 500 Stinger missiles, surface air missiles, you know, 100,000 weapons, this and that, and, and ammunition, et cetera, drones. And he said, okay. And he said, hey, listen, these weapons are going to be used against the Americans in the military because, you know, we're fighting for, you know, to take them out. And he goes, oh, I don't care. Your enemies are my enemies. So he had he had no qualms providing these kind of weaponry to be used against agents over there, military personnel, you know, whatever. And he had said, I had the people to help you. If you don't know how to use what I'm giving you, I'll send you people to show you how to use the kind of weaponry I'm going to sell you guys. And and they were looking at tens and tens of millions of dollars in the exchange. So that's that's the kind of guy that, unfortunately, uh, that just got released by President Biden. Very critical. I, I said uh, on a show that I did early, four months ago with shout out to uh, Gary Jenkins from Ganlang Wire. He has yep. great content. If you haven't seen him, outstanding. I've done like four or five shows with him also. One with the Yakuza yep. and other ones. Uh, very similar right. operation also that happened with the Yakuza high-ranking member. Um, and I, we and the question was asked, should the U.S. exchange for Brittany Briner? And most people said, no, that, that's yeah. not worth it. It's, it's, it. It had something else have to be done because you encourage this guy. It's, it wasn't a fair trade, right? Not a fair deal. Yeah, He, he, he is the merchant of death. And she's a good basketball player, professional basketball player, all star, yeah. right? Two yeah, time, two time gold medalist. But she had a little bit of, of hash oil that was medically prescribed, right? Yeah. I mean, she she didn't think she was doing anything wrong, right? Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden, she gets nine years. That it's that crazy. that is him using. It doesn't. No, that's Putin being Putin. Putin mm -hmm. is. You know, look what he does with anybody that's critical of him, right? And yeah. he does. I wrote a book about Putin's tyranny, and this is typical for, for Vladimir Putin, right? Yeah. If you criticize him, if you do anything, you stand up against him. If you're a dissident, they'll poison you, right? Don't drink hot tea if you're in Russia, right? <laughs> that, that's bad news. And, yeah. and if you're and if you're a reporter or an investigator, a critical of him, don't stand near open windows, yeah. right? How many accidents do you see? They slip all, and it wouldn't have to be open, and off they went through the 14 floors. Yeah. No, no. That's that's that, and that's a pattern. I was like one after the other, so. You know, it's it's another situation, but I thought because the war is going so badly for the for Putin and Russia yeah. that I, I thought in a year he wouldn't be around. Yeah. And I know it stinks for uh for Brittany Griner to be in that situation. I was saw on the, the video and the pictures what they had her doing in the penal colony and the kind of the labor she was doing, which yeah. which stinks. But to release this guy yeah. back to them, uh, I thought was a big mistake. So if, if you like what you're seeing, you like what you're hearing, I know you read it. What's what's your take on that? Yeah, that's my book. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's crazy like that that they would even make that trade, and it's good she got out. But yeah, the whole thing was a setup from oh, it is, It's a play. It's a chess play. He he's a member. Putin's a good chess player. Yeah. And to me, it, it felt like uh, President Biden got played there, and he was playing checkers, and Putin's yeah. playing chess, right? Yeah. And, well, and Paul Whelan is still there. Yeah. Well, one thing he's I was thinking in. of is um. Maybe, maybe Putin could have played himself. Like, what if Victor's the one who takes him out? You, you, you we'll see. That's that's something yeah. that that could happen. He he, he now registered with that uh, ultra right wing party, yeah. And, and it seems like in some ways, he 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 would do things, and he he would like to see like a Soviet Union return. Yeah. But maybe not like that. A little different. 
but he would love to see them get because he was part of that. He was there in the heyday, right? Yeah, he, he was rushed out. He had been around the world. He he supported the wars in, in Angola. Yeah. He supported keeping the uh, Iron Curtain in Eastern Europe. He, uh, he 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 wants all that to return again. Yeah, uh, and, and these guys have that mindset, and uh, you know, people want their freedom. They want democracy. Look at the Ukrainians. They don't want to yeah. go under Russian control, right? No. I've seen in your book, people. he was in Afghanistan. He had something to do with supplying arms in there as well. In your book, oh, I've seen oh, that. oh yeah, yeah. He he claims, which I don't believe anything he says because everything comes out of their lies. Yeah. He he'll support anybody. I yeah. think he also put guns in Al Qaeda's hands. He supported the Northern Alliance, right? In Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, guess what? He'll probably support also Al Qaeda because in any conflict, it appears he doesn't care he, as long as you're willing to pay him. He'll support both sides of a war. He's, yeah. He did a lot in, in Central Africa in some of the wars. He'll take one side, then he'll the other side. So yeah. I, I could see him back then before 9-11 that he was supplying both sides to keep the conflict going because it's good for his business, right? Yeah. They, they, they want them both to yes. keep on killing each other. Just and, keep and that, selling and guns. Keep, that's all, oh, man. He, 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 he's, he's definitely the, the most notorious arms trafficker in the world. No, no doubt, no oh, doubt yeah. about that. I mean, especially with, with his contacts and flying planes. He was known to go to some of the most dangerous places in Africa and have his plane. And people will say, hey, why don't you like Somalia, for example, right? Yeah. Or other places. He says, you know, why don't you go to the hotel and stay in the hotel? He was known to stay with his crew on the airplane wow. because in a moment's notice, he knew he might have to leave. Yeah. That, that's a dangerous and crazy situation. So he knew he was in really bad places and he had no Smart guy, like putting. Yeah, he, he turned Africa from using machetes to using AK-47s, right? And everything yeah. else he can supply him with. You know RPGs or whatever, and look at Somalia back Mogadishu. What yeah. a war zone that turned out. That that was hellish for the Americans too, for the United States yeah. out there. So there, there, there's he, he's he's definitely definitely an, a, a dangerous guy that unfortunately should never see a light of day. And he now he's back in Russia, uh, somewhat of a huge celebrity, uh, unfortunately, yeah. and he's cashing in on it, uh, and and he's looking he's going to probably run for office, and he's probably going to be briefing Putin how. What else can you do for Putin? Just what I'm seeing, uh, he was very good overcoming embargoes, right? Because yeah. the UN, all these countries had major embargoes, right? Weapons embargoes. Yeah. And yet he was a master of overcoming them all. <laughs> well, how do you yeah. how do you do it? Uh, he he was very good at bribing officials, right? Mm -hmm. He had a lot of money and he made a lot. He, some people thought he was close to uh, worth maybe close to a billion dollars in assets. Wow. Because he's been doing it for so many years. Maybe those blood diamonds. He, he can make a lot of money off that when he can pay like that. That's that's tens of millions of dollars. And and he's no dummy with his money. And, and he knew how to invest his money. He had investments in the United States also. He had investments all over the world. He would arm also in Asia, Middle East. He was friends with uh, Gaddafi. They said wow. he would also arm Gaddafi too. So he would you know arm some of the worst people in the world and, and stuff like that. So I think he's, he's good at overcoming uh, embargoes, bribing officials, his contacts. Maybe Putin is looking for more... Uh, more uh, mercenaries, right? Yeah. And maybe in Africa, his contacts and other places, people will fight. You know, if, if the Russians don't want to fight, he he wants people that are going to fight. So he'll find people they can pay to fight. So yeah. those those are things I, I think he's going to bring to the table because you don't put that kind of effort into it unless you know you're going to get a good return. Especially Putin. Putin's a guy that put that kind of effort into what he's doing in the middle of a war. There's a major return factor for this. And that was a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what, what happens now because it can go either way. I, I personally think he's going to, like you said, probably run for office and yeah, I, I think it's a, a massive mistake. One of all of Biden's advisors just telling him in there. Just... I, I think it was a political decision. Yeah. It, it's my my opinion because uh, uh, obviously, she, you know, Paul Whelan, I'll throw some politics out there a little bit. Paul Whelan was a Republican. He voted for Trump. Yeah, and uh, Brittany Griner is a is a big Democrat, right? Celebrity, yeah. professional athlete. So I think he got a lot of pressure from his constituents that he had to do something. Yeah. So that's that's what. But you should never let politics get away from national security, in my opinion. Yeah, that's just uh, not 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 good not good thing to do. I mean, I think we're all happy she's back, but you know, you can tell how she was played because remember she was also a very popular player in Russia. She yeah. played in WNBA, right? Which is, was a professional league, and then she'll go to Russia. And play in the off season, and yeah. and I heard she was extremely popular w with the Russian people, especially in Moscow where she played. So yeah. this definitely was a tactic. When I think Putin saw he had an opportunity. I think his lights, his eyes, his eyes lit up, and he said, "Oh, this is something maybe we can work on for an exchange." 
Because normally this kind of exchange, you know, that happened during the Cold War in the 80s, you know, was for a spy for a spy, right? Yeah. Equal? Yeah. This wasn't equal trade. Yeah. You know, Victor Bout, the most dangerous man in the world. Brittany Griner, a basketball player who got set up. Yeah. That's, 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 you can't do those kind of trades. You can't do it. And I, and I said then, it's, it's, you can't, four months ago, I said you, couldn't, you shouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. And unfortunately, he did it. So now we got to keep an eye on him. And I think everybody should keep him accountable. That's why elections matter. And I also wrote a book politically on Joe Biden, one and done. I had made predictions then yep. that the Republicans would take down the House, and they have. You know, I wrote yeah. that book in April. But it it's coming up, and I think Joe Biden be a one-term president. Um, I think Ron DeSantis, the governor, had a red wave in Florida, very popular governor. Uh, stood up, kept business open during COVID, uh, while the Northeast suffered a lot. And I think, I think he can uh, win in twenty twenty-four. Yeah, that's my prediction. I put so out there. You think he's going to take it out? I, I think he can beat Joe Biden. Yeah, I think he, he's yeah. he's become uh, unpopular a lot. Of, I mean, the, the exit in Afghanistan was extremely unpopular. The death of those service personnel, 13 yeah. in them. You can't have the Taliban. You know, it, it's a shame, you know, that uh, and I put that in my book and Joe Biden won and done. It, yeah. It's a shame that the Afghan security forces collapsed like they did. That was, that was we spent billions so of fast, too. It, it was, they didn't fight. Yeah. They didn't fight. That's unbelievable. You train these people, spend all this resource, and they didn't fight for their country. That tells yeah. me that they don't believe in the country. Yeah. And what I've read and everything else, that Afghanistan, it, it's like maybe like many different nations all in one. Yeah. So they're very regional, very tribal. They really don't even want to be in an Afghanistan nation. But we try to keep them together. But, you know, you at least have to have a plan B. If everything falls apart, at least hold Kabul, right? Yeah. The airport. you got to get you, your citizens out of there. Yeah, in, in a safe manner, and you can't have the Taliban, who you were enemies with for twenty years, who supported Al Qaeda, right? That attacked nine yeah. eleven, do your security for you, right? But look what happened. They had a bomb go right in there and, and, and kill all those yeah. Afghan citizens and our military. Thirteen military guys died. You yeah. know, that's that was a bad decision. Bad decision there. So, um, a lot of stuff going on there. That was bad. The economy, the worst, highest inflation in forty years. We, we have huge inflation issues. I know that they're, they're trying to, it keeps on increasing the interest rate. So those who follow American politics, there's a lot of comparisons to Joe Biden, to Jimmy Carter, right? Yeah. Jimmy Carter had the same mistakes, disastrous and foreign policy, poor, high unemployment, high, high inflation, high interest rates, right? And he lost to, like anything else in history, those who see history, history tends to repeat itself. And those who don't know it, doomed to repeat it, right? Yeah. So a lot of times you see the same patterns. So that's why I love history. I'm a big history guy also. Yeah. You look at 1980, is 2024 going to be a similar, very unpopular president, a popular governor from a big state like California with Ronald Reagan, who was the governor, right? He he runs, he beats Jimmy Carter. Can this happen with Ron DeSantis? And, and uh, especially with uh, Biden being, he'll be almost 86 years old if he gets another second term. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's struggling. I think he's already struggling as it is. With his health issues, he's having a lot of get. He's having health issues, and and you can see it in him. I think it's already taking everything out of him. I don't. I don't think health wise, he, he can even finish longer. So I think you know, Ron DeSantis is about my age, and I think it's time for the new generation, you know, yeah. to come up and, and and take over and, and and fresh young blood. I think it's, it's yeah. I, need young I think blood Trump had him. his time also, but I think he comes up with too much legal issues now. Yeah. And I think that trading cards, man, I don't know if you saw those trading cards he put <laughs> out. I didn't know if it was real or not. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Steve, Steve Bannon, who was a big supporter, he's going to do time for him, right? Steve yeah. Bannon, what, he's going to do time for the guy because he didn't want to appear in front of Congress, testify. He, he, he He's doing time. He says, man, I can't do this. His words, yeah. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I can't do this because what, 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 I mean, really trading cards? Like you're a superhero? Yeah, I, I've I've never seen anything like that before. I'll be honest, with you. It's, I'm, it's I think crazy. he's just going. Yeah. He, he's having so so many legal issues. His company was found guilty in a New York court, right? Yeah, for 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 tax evasion, for tax corruption. So he's 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 seeing some big problems. He's having some big big problems, and I think he he might end up getting the commission that was investigating the the uh, the riot that happened in the Capitol building, right? The storming of the Capitol building. Yeah. Um. And what I'm reading and hearing. That his name might be submitted to the FBI, DOJ, to be indicted. Wow. Yeah. So we'll see. Remember, he used to chant "Lock her up," you know, for Hillary Clinton. 
Yeah. Right. And advisor, all his advisors now who are part of that have been locked up. That might be his fate at the end also. And I don't think he yeah. gets a pardon from Biden. Now, if DeSantis becomes president in this last two or th two years, that's a different issue. Yeah, he won't get a pardon. You know, man. Four, four did four did pardon Nixon, right? Yeah. But they were both Republicans. I yeah. don't, I don't, I will say that's something I'm putting out there. Could happen. I, like I said, I like watching History this. History repeating itself. Those, those are things that I can see happening. Can Trump end up getting indicted? Yeah, he, he could. Yeah, and, and would DeSantis, if he's president? Pardon him. That's possible. I, of course, Joe Biden won't. <laughs> yeah, no, <definitely. laughs> they, they, they don't like each other. Yeah, they, they're they're at odds. So, interesting stuff to talk about there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you think? Say, if if Trump was in now instead of Biden, do you think he would have made that trade as well? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, he he had a chance to get out Paul Whelan, but he wouldn't trade back then either. I mean, yeah. Paul Whelan was arrested in twenty eighteen. Right, yeah, and a trumped up charge on an espionage. Uh, I guess he was going to see what I was reading. He's a former Marine. Yeah, he has his issues. Uh, so, just so people know, Paul Whelan also had was court martialed when he was was a Marine. Uh, he had he was a staff sergeant down to E four for larceny charge. Okay, that's out there, but he's still a Marine, right? He retired. Yeah. He, he went off to Marine, and he was uh, going to a wedding, visiting uh, friends out there. Allegedly, he has a friend out there, and allegedly there was a thumb drive put, provided to him. With some sort of personal information of Russian officials, yeah. I don't know. That that sounds kind of weird and yeah. fishy, and a lot, a lot of weird stuff is is in there. So, uh, but now I heard Putin. This is the game he played. Allegedly, he only wanted one for one, but that one for one wasn't fair. Yeah. If if you're going to ever do a trade with for for Victor Bout, it's going to have to be at least five, six, seven. You know, significant. I mean, one for yeah. one, uh, and it would have to be someone who's really, really, really maybe a guy who was a major spy for for the United States that did a lot of great work. Okay. Yeah. And even trade, you know, I'm not sure Paul Whelan will be an even trade with Brittany Griner at all for, for this guy. Uh, but, you know, he's been there for four years. And uh, I, I think now Putin says, well, maybe we can talk, trade Paul Whelan, but he wants to trade out a guy in Germany who's doing a life sentence who killed somebody yeah. who, who was uh, a commando assassin during the Chechen Wars. That doesn't oh. sound like a fair trade either, does it? No. See, see what's going here? See the pattern? Yeah. This yeah. guy wants really bad, bad people in exchange for people who really shouldn't be there. Yeah. So he looks really strong and in some of these trades. But it's not that just the United States. He's done to Canada. He's doing it to our NATO allies. Um, it's it's a trend that he's working on that he thinks he can, he can get away with this ploy because he pulls at people's, oh, bring them home because they're suffering. But this, this person, I think if we wait like a year or so, the war keeps on going bad. I don't think Putin's going to be there. Maybe you're right. Maybe Victor Bell takes over. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, maybe maybe they'll, they'll turn and bite him at the end. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that was his plan all along. He's a secret genius. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, man. So interesting reads. All those are interesting books there. Uh, I, I, I appreciate you, you like that. And hopefully we can do short videos on that. The ones I've seen, I think people will, will yeah. like that, especially talking about, about Russian and, and China, Xi Jinping. A lot yeah. of issues there too. Uh, we, yeah. I know it's close to you guys. I know you guys are gonna get those nuclear submarines. You're, you're trying to get that from from us and, yeah. and the British. I know we talked. The French weren't happy about that last yeah. time, but <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but they got. But they got over it. They've got other issue. Macron, I think, is dealing with his economy <laughs> and his, his problems. He's got. He's got a lot of his play going on right now. He's. He's yeah. gotten over that. We're, he's we're, not worried especially about with the backyard. Especially with the backyard, they got Putin raging with this war. So yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they have a lot, lot to be concerned about. But uh, interesting, I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about this, what's going on with COVID in China, uh, yeah, sure. which Xi Jinping had to back down. Wow. Unbelievable. The the protests, you saw that, right? Yeah. They're chanting the down with the CCP. That, I had never heard that before. Uh, maybe last time it was uh, uh, Tiananmen back in, in the late 80s, right? When yeah. the students were protesting. But yeah, this yep. was all over the country, not just in Beijing, in Shanghai, in major cities. Really wanting a change, she must go. Right, Whoa. CCP brought down. Right, people are, are tired of this. They're rising up, yep. and they're they're sick of the COVID measures oppressing them. Yeah, oppressing them. Right. So I, I'm I'm I'm. We'll see. We'll see if she even lasts another term. A lot of changes. People, this new generation that's educated, it's not a peasant nation anymore. Right. Yeah. They're educated people. They get information. They know what's going on with this guy is oppressive. They know what they're doing with other ethnic groups. 
right? If you open yeah. your mouth against them, they do it. And people want to live like we do, right? Thomas, yeah. free. You want a democracy. You want to be able to speak free like we do right now. You know, in other countries, we can't have this conversation. You nah. know, if, you're, yeah. if, if, if we were in, in communist Cuba or in Venezuela, we were criticizing the regimes. We, we, we'll be arrested. Yeah. In China, in, in Moscow, we're, we're, we're talking about Putin criticizing him. We would disappear. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're fortunate we're in a country where we can we can express ourselves and criticize and make a case. And people can say, listen, and many people want to have a constitution. They want to have democracy. And yeah. we're fortunate. I don't I'm not saying the United States is a perfect system. But, you know, George Washington said it best in 1797 when I when I, I went to Mount Vernon with my family recently. And if anybody in the United States or international visiting, if you're in northern Virginia, you got to see Mount Vernon. This is Washington's home. Right. Where, where he was. It's an amazing estate there, a lot of history there. And uh, he says that there, it's not a perfect system. This after he finished his second term and two years before he died, but it's the best system out there. And I think it still applies today, wow. you know, yeah. with democracy. We're going to have issues. There's, there's no doubt. There's nothing perfect. We're humans, right? Yeah. We're, we're going to have mistakes. We make mistakes. But I can tell you one thing. I don't want to be under the CCP. I don't want to be under Putin. I don't want to be under some oppressive regime. At least we can make changes and say like, hey, I'm not happy with Biden. I can vote for it. The same with you guys. You don't, you're not happy with your prime minister, right? You can you can vote and change them out, right? Yeah, change parties. Exactly. That 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 that's what you guys have in Australia. That's what we have in NATO. But many people are don't like that, and they want to have the control over the masses. Yeah. And, and that's what you see with a lot of the CCP. So what I saw there with Xi Jinping, uh, he, he's he's de- genocidal. It's called Xi Jinping, a genocidal dictator, and he's no doubt a genocidal dictator. If you're not a hung ethnicity, right? Yeah. If you're a Muslim ethnic, if you're from Tibet, if you're from, he he is destroying these cultures, yeah. he's destroying these peoples, right, to control them. And you're seeing the case after case. And and the reason why I started writing was because I think I mentioned your book because there's no way the IOC should have let, you know, China have, you know, Beijing have their second game, right? Yeah, the Olympics, the I've summer that, game, yeah. and the winter game. I mean, it's ridiculous. R- yeah. ridiculous that's the first book i wrote and then from there i, ju- I just got motivated and just inspired me so <laughs> yeah. find something that you you feel in- inspirational about and you'll be surprised what you can do maybe you can write 50 books also in, in one year yeah because with all the books it's over over two hundred fifty thousand words yeah so there, there's a lot there right it's just i chose that format because i really enjoy writing about different topics and stuff which yeah. uh, has led me to other projects uh, i'm not sure if i mentioned your show last time based on my book can you see my poster behind me yeah, yeah. ATF, ATF Undercover, that's my autobiography. That's the my, first book my I read. Yeah. Huh? That's the oh, first oh, one awesome. I read. Oh, thank you, man. Hey, I, oh, great, great. I appreciate that. And it's about my life, right? Yeah. It, it, it's about the, the good, the bad, and the ugly ATF. And, and I also talk about cases and solutions to some of the problems we have in here, right? Yeah. So people pick, take notice. I wrote it. I mean, I was in ATF headquarters last year, right? Yeah. I had just retired about, about a year and a half. And I've never thought I'd be doing uh, shows, you know, around the world, right? Uh, writing all these books, and uh, you get noticed, right? And I started dealing. Shout out to Steve Gillum from uh, RMC, Roar Media Creative, uh, from London, England. And uh, now we've worked um, with a award-winning writer to do a TV pilot, right, on my book. Um, and now we're looking at to get picked up and greenlighted. She's going to co-produce it. So wow. did I ever think I had a TV show done? No. I think I was going to be a consultant doing this. No, that's pretty cool. <laughs> this, man. Is where, this, is, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going with this stuff. So it's it's interesting and the skill set and the knowledge I have. And when I'm doing it because I want to pass it on. Uh, like I said, I don't charge people to go on these shows. You know, you know, some yeah. people want to, want to charge and everything else. I I enjoy it because I like talking about it and I enjoy the books I've written. Uh, they're not expensive either, right? Yeah. Most, all my books are under ten dollars and most yeah, of my books definitely. under five. And if if you're a Kindle unlimited subscriber. All my books are free, right? Yeah. So if you're a KU subscriber on Amazon, uh, you got to read my books for free and enjoy the information and what you have there. And and it's if again, if, if politics is not your thing, we have organized crime. We deal with one percenters. We deal with the mafia, true crime, uh, travel books. I've traveled a lot. I have some great travel books. I've done some fiction also, and also uh, uh, some stuff with um, my daughter, two kids' books I've written. So yeah, a little bit of everything. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Yeah. You won't, you won't get bored. You definitely got a lot of exciting topics. I can talk about. I, people say that's one thing I've heard, and they say the same thing. Every time I see your different show, Ignacio, yeah. I, I see it's like it, you know, some people it's the same thing, the same story, 
with me, I have so many different things to talk about. It's everyone's different. And I said, yeah. yeah. So you can enjoy a different show. And I try to do that. I try and mix it up a little bit. That way it's not the same thing. And people can say, okay, I listen to that. I'll bring this into it. Hey, maybe we'll talk the components that you and I like to write a lot. We've, we've talked about that, yeah. how much we like writing, right? And then yeah. imagine those those out there. And you also have uh, some great sites on Facebook too. Uh, yeah. The Red Panda, right? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And the playlist. Yeah. And uh, the Sopranos, Australia Sopranos, right? Yeah. Any other ones? Uh Ah uh, yeah, harvest swap, a gardening one. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen those too, and, and it's good because you can talk about people to write and talk about all work visually. There's so yeah. many people who are creative in nature, and I think this is a great format for people to go back. Sometimes you get caught up in work. I'll be honest with you, when I was working, you know, twelve hours, fourteen hour days in these cases, it's something that never ends because you know I have yeah. informants, right? Yeah, and, and you're working with people, and and it's like they have their lives. I got my own personal life. I got to help yeah. them with their lives, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's just always going on. I got to deal with bad guys. You know, they don't know who I am. They think I'm a bad guy too, right? Yeah. So they're calling me all you know, crazy hours to try to do things. And I got to juggle things. And, you know, the, yeah. the life of an undercover agent is, is is crazy, right? Yeah. So you forget, you lose a little bit of yourself, right? You yeah. lose the things that make you happy. Hey, I, I like writing. I like playing music. I like being an artist. I like doing things. And when I was able to retire, it kind of had more time with the family and do things that, you kind of almost forgot about it and said, man, will I ever get back to those things? And I think this is a, a, a good time. And I think especially with, you know, with these uh, social media platforms out there, you can do these things, which, I mean, you know, maybe 20 years ago, we didn't think about doing a show in Australia, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I do it, you know, in, in London, I did one, with, you know, Stephen Gillen out yeah. there around the world, India. I did one uh, where it was a written interview. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I have people download my books from Japan. For Brazil, wow. you know, that's that's pretty cool, man. That's that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So I encourage people and, and, it, and it's, I'm not here to plug anybody. Yeah. But hey, I'm self published. Yeah. I'm I'm self published, right? Yeah. And and that's I, I try to get my book uh, ATF undercover, uh, which is gonna be a called different name for the TV pilot. And I can't say now, but hopefully maybe I can come back later. I have a non disclosure agreement and we can talk about more about what's going on there. Okay. Uh, and and I think it could be almost like a Breaking Bad franchise. That, yeah. That's a good. I think it could end up being what we're talking about. So we'll we'll, we'll see how how that how that uh, progresses there too. Um, but then the, these platforms make it easier for you to do these things. Yeah. Because if, if not, yeah, technology changed everything. I mean, I, I can I can write. I can do this. I can contact them. You know, you, you go on Facebook. You, you, let's see, you don't need an international number. Just through Facebook alone. I, yeah. I can do this, make contact people either like we do, like we talk. Yeah. And that's how I do chats, video, right? Yeah. All over the world. That's awesome. Yeah, it's that's, incredible. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So going back to Kindle Limited, um, I, I was trying to get the book published traditionally, but there was so backlogged when I was trying to back a year and a half with COVID and everything else. And my, I had a family member who was in publishing for over 20 years wow. and she just changed careers. So I talked to her. And she gave me the idea about Kindle Unlimited because a lot of people like it because you can self-publish. You can do as much as you like. Yeah. And you get – I mean, the money was okay. I mean, I get 80% royalty, right? Yeah, if you have with cool. a publisher, they, they, they take a lot. Yeah. They're taking a, a, a big chunk. So you don't make as much. Make maybe 20%. Yeah. Yeah, 20. And I'm doing all digital books, ebooks. So yeah. it's green for the environment yeah. and it's green for your pocket. Well, man, yeah. that's, that's, that's nice. That's, 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 that's your new that's slogan. <laughs> That's that's a win win for everybody. So I go like out it. there, check it out. It's not. The, it takes the first one is always challenging, like anything else. New you do, yeah. how, how to put all the information in, how to do it, how to do your your cover. It, every but once you get it down, it you can crank them out. And then if you do also want to do, uh, which is a little bit harder, but if you want to do paperback and hard, you have that access to do those two. You get less, but you can yeah. do paperback and you can do the, the hard covers too. But uh, and you don't need you don't need a gatekeeper anymore, right? Yeah. There's no more. You 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 pass the gatekeeper. Yeah, if you want to pass Amazon will review it, make sure there's nothing that there that's going to be violent related, yeah. bigotry, you know, you know, anything that has to do with violence, stuff like that, right? Yeah. So make sure it's it's good, it's clean. Uh, you edit it yourself. I like to do everything else. I do everything. I edit it. I I, I write it. I I have it published. I market myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're good at it. Yeah. yeah, and I enjoy it, and I enjoy yeah. it. And so if you if you have time for that, you have something you're interested in, check it out. Yeah. Check it out. I mean. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on Facebook, Ignacio Esteban. I, I, you know, just message me. 
and I'll be happy to answer any questions how to do it. It's not that that hard, but if you have passion for it, uh, I know you and I talk about Thomas, that could be also a good option maybe for you to get started also. Don't, yeah. don't wait for the gatekeepers to give you the green light. Don't ever wait for that, man. Life is too short for that. Move forward and, and go on. And, and this times, you know, it's, it's a great feeling to have your work out there and people reading it around the world. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have, I give everybody a heads up, you're always going to have trolls, right? Yeah. You always have critics who are going to put bad things, no matter how good the book is. Yeah. You don't take the too high and take it too low. Always yeah. stay happy with the middle. You know, people enjoy it and the people who are not going to enjoy your work. For whatever reason, some people don't like short books. Okay. Some people think they're long books too bad. You're going to have both. So yeah. don't take them either way. Yeah, for sure. Just, yeah, keep moving forward. Yeah. I'll, absolutely. I'll definitely have more questions for you too in, in the chat. <laughs> no, absolutely, man. I want everybody to, and uh, you know, get those books out there. If that's something you have an inspiration to do, I think yeah. do it. It's it's a, it's really a great format to get them out there, and then you can work on marketing yourself. Yeah. You know, right? You get people interested in, and you go on all the different lines. You get it. It's it slowly. It has to take time. But if you just want the work out there and people to read it, you know, yeah. Kindle Unlimited is what I did. You know, you get a lesser percentage, but everybody reads your book for free, right? Yeah. You get more feedback. And you get more records. So that's some different ideas you put out there. You can put your books out there for free yeah. uh, for a limited time and, and you get back. So, yeah, that's about. pretty cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see you like the TV show. Go ahead, man. That'll be awesome. Oh, man, that that would be awesome. I, I can't wait to get that going. Uh, we yeah. got, the, like I said, the pie's done and we're just getting everything to hopefully get uh, it pitched and picked up with the, you I know, mean, I get hopefully co produce our RMC to get with another company. Yeah. I think it'll be fantastic. It's it's a process, but you know what? This is pretty cool. Yeah. And then For sure. at, the, at the end, we can have you going on, on one of the episodes going on Thomas Berryman TV. No, absolutely. I'd love to come <laughs> back and, and talk about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. I know everybody, everybody else wants to be back on talking about it, so that's for sure. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to yeah, but the, talk to you about is the one percenters. I, I read that book. Yes. Um, yes. I didn't. I didn't realize uh, how Daniel started after World War Two. So I read that. Yeah, there's se several Hell's Angels, right? Yeah. I mean that 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 was the, the the battle there. I mean, Sonny Sonny Barger founded the Hell's Angels in Oakland, California, yeah. back in the, in the 50s. But there was another one that was founded by an auto uh, Friedley out of San Bernardino, California, before him. Yeah. So that was something that uh, Sonny Barger had to uh, kind of get the Hell's Angels in California. To come under, you know, write the bylaws and chapter because there was the wars in the fifties between yeah. Hell's Angels, different different chapters under one umbrella, right? Yeah. And uh, so Sonny Barger, he started that, and, he, and he's kind of an interesting guy. Those who don't know, he just recently passed this year, uh, wow. in in June, yeah. And and so did uh, a very another popular Canadian Hell's Angel, Mom Bouchard, right? Okay. Uh, out of Quebec, the famous you know Quebec wars. So, uh, he also passed, and but he was doing time. In, in prison uh sonny barger never really did a lot of time he did maybe about a uh, four years federal time a little bit yeah. here and there on the state in california yeah but nothing like taco bowman who at the end of the 90s got two life sentences and, and died a few years ago in in prison right or yeah. or, or doc Cavazos from, from the mongol nation who, who got hit with uh, racketeering charges and then cooperates with the feds uh, atf under operation black rain Right. Yeah. But uh, yes. Yeah. You know, Sonny Barger, uh, he almost. Uh, so let me let me back up a little bit with Sonny Barger. Uh, one thing I've noticed with a lot of these guys who end up going in, either Mambo Shore, Sonny Barger, not Taco Bowman so much, Doc Cavazos, it is uh, they come from like maybe broken homes. Right. Yeah. Uh, mother, Sonny Barger, left him when he was like uh, four months old with his sister and his dad. Dad was an alcoholic, uh, had yeah. issues. So he, he was brought up in, in this environment. He dropped out of high school. He joined the military underage in the army. Yeah. And then after a year and a half, they found out he was underage. But he, I guess he did He did fine. Uh, they didn't give him a disarmable discharge, just a regular discharge from the military. Mm -hmm. And then he, he had this thing with, with bikes and everything else. He was very good working with bicycles. And that's how he developed the Hells Angels in Oakland. You know, I think he was part of the Panther Club out of Oakland. Yeah. And, and, then, and then became uh, the Hells Angels. And then mm -hmm. he, he just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, in the in the 70s, uh, he had an issue where he was involved in and they became unfortunately he developed his father had he developed drug addiction with cocaine. 
right? Mm -hmm. He drank a lot. And, and these factors play into it. Uh, allegedly, he was, try he was tried for murder of a drug courier from Texas that was in California, I guess, owed him a drug debt. I think it was about forty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. remember the exact amount. It's in the book. Wow. And um, allegedly a witness who testified in trial said that Sonny Barger killed the guy, shot him in the head when he was sleeping. Oh. Seriously, he went to the guy's house and shot him when he was sleeping as a guest. Yeah. Um, he was acquitted of that <clears throat> in the 70s because a, I don't know, just only that, but an Oakland detective sergeant testified that Sonny Barger had been cooperating with law enforcement with them for years, wow. to provide them information about guns and explosives that are being used by leftist organizations at the time in the 70s who were very anti-war, right? Anti-Vietnam War, who yeah. were Black Panther members, underground weather members, and he was providing information. So he put that out there. Did, did that help? For the jury to yeah. acquit him, maybe. Yeah. But if he would have been, if he been convicted, he would have been probably looking at, at the death penalty. And later, they were they would get away with the death penalty from California, maybe life. So he may have been doing life in prison. His his life would have been over. He wouldn't yeah. have lived the life they continued living. Uh, he would do some time later in eighty seven, uh, being convicted for crossing state lines uh, to go to uh, to Kentucky to kill an outlaw who had killed their chapter president. Uh, wow. from Anchorage, right? <laughs> he got about four years for that. I think that kind of changed him a little because then he took a back seat in the Hells Angels from yep. there. And he became more of a celebrity, I, international icon, because he, he became, uh, you know, Sons of Anarchy. He became yeah. a consultant. I've never seen that. That's based on the Hells Angels. And he yeah, was a consultant okay. with, with the show's creator. I've seen I've seen a couple episodes, um, but I haven't, I haven't watched it all. Yeah, you can uh, check it yeah. out. I've watched a few too. But yeah. I think he's even in some of them. What I hear. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll definitely he, have to he, check it out. He's in a character, so yeah. you know, and, and he went through a lot of other things. He had cancer. Uh, <clears throat> he had uh, the vocal cord, cords removed. He spoke with, with a voice box right here, yep. right? The whole thing. Um, wow. And and then and again at the end, he had he passed away this year. So I put a lot more detail in the book about the Hell's Angel, but Hell's Angels have expanded, you know, in the United States <clears throat> internationally. They're in Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, say, like you mentioned, you know, the violent biker one percenters, who are the one percenters, right? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you the top six, but there's other groups that are not as big. Maybe like, you know, you have the majors and the minors, right? And, and you know, the majors are, are going to be the Hells Angels, the yeah. outlaws. And you're going to have the banditos, you know, the, the Vogels, the pagans, you know, yeah. and uh, the, uh, I think I mentioned the Mongols. So, I mean, th those are the, the big ones in there. And uh, Hells Angels have expanded, you know, in Europe. They've expanded in Australia, right? Banditos also in Australia, right? Yeah. You have, you have the smaller ones. You have Gypsy Jokers, right? Also in Australia, and, and other ones out there. And I, one of the books I was reading, uh, they get pretty violent. I remember one time in Australia. I don't remember the city right now. I read the book years ago. They put a car bomb in uh, a high-ranking, um, I think it was a sheriff of a small town because he was investigating one of the clubs, and, and the and the car bomb exploded, ripping him in in half. And mind the torso somewhere else. I don't know if you, you remember that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the, the Australians had some bad biker wars also. And I, I've read books about them in Australia, the biker wars. Canada, uh, I talked about Mambo Shorth, some of the most violent biker, I'm sorry, some of the most violent, bi, uh, most violent crime syndicates in Canada. Uh, and I talked about him specifically and some of the stuff he's done. And yeah. he was violent in the Quebec wars out there with the biker <laughs> groups. So, I think the one percenters are a very, very interesting group there. I've uh, seen them Taco in Thailand Bowling. as well. Right. Yeah, they're they're everywhere. Yeah, I, I heard in New Zealand too. I was I was seeing some biker groups out there in New Zealand. Yeah, and, and they they really get hardcore um, with the tattoos, right? Almost a whole body, almost like a yakuza thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was looking at some of these pictures the other day, and I couldn't believe it. Full body tattoos, like a yakuza tattoo, right? The yeah. whole thing covered up, their faces, everything. Uh, I think they're getting way more. I was talking about that. I think I'll show with you about Japan because again, it's so hardcore. Yeah. But some of these places, man, are flourishing. And I think that's not a bad idea. Like we mentioned in Australia, if they're congregated together, that should be a problem, right? Yeah. They should be arrested for, for, for getting together because you know they're 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 doing something conspiring and stuff. I have yep. a pretty cool uh with with shout again to William Steele. <clears throat> yeah. He put together a little video, another short. He's he's done some too. All and right, cool. he shows a biker brawl. You seen that one? No. Nah. The Hell's Angels and, and, and the Mongols. 
it's about a minute and a half. And then he adds a little bit end with machine gun fire. And then he promotes our books with one percenters. But it's wow. a decent fight between the Hells Angels and the Mongols about last yeah. year. So if you, if you go, you can check it out. Uh, so these guys out. are always going at each other. Hmm? Yeah, I'll check it out. William's always got good stuff, too. Yes, for sure, for sure. And I think we're going to do some more. Cool, and I, and you guys haven't seen it. Check out the short videos that that uh, Thomas has done. Uh, not just in my books, but I enjoy all his short videos he does. They're, they're awesome. Thanks, <laughs> man. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I've seen so, in your book, too. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. That, there's um, one of the ATF agents. I think it's, um, he got to, he rose to being a vice president of one of the clubs. I was just like, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, that I mean with with, with I think with, the Mongols, which club with, Mongols, yeah, you, yeah, you had a lot, lot of guys rise up. You get full patch members. I yeah. mean, you you had, uh, and that'll be Operation Black Rain. That was a three year investigation, right? That culminated with, with the uh, the arrest of Ruben Doc Cavazos back yeah. in two thousand eight. So they they because you get a little background on him. He grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, he was he grew up in a culture. Of the Sureños, right? He, he was a Sureño street gang guy. He grew up in that culture. So, like I said, I, I see guys, if you grew up in you know, a broken home, you grew up with street gangs, I, I, it makes sense for that to happen. But I saw yeah. Taco Bowman, I, I'll, I'll deviate a little bit, so I'll miss this point here. Taco Bowman, who became the head of the outlaws, right? He he went to Catholic school, right? Yeah. He, he was a product of going to Catholic school education, right? Wow. He sent his children to private schools, right? <laughs> But yeah. yet he became the head in, in the 80s uh, of one of the most vicious outlaw biker groups out there and putting hits and murders on people. Maybe that's why in the, in the 90s, in the late 90s, he was convicted on racketeering charges out of Tampa. I knew one of the prosecutors because I worked a lot in Tampa who did that case. And wow. it's a big thing. If you go to Tampa courthouse, you'll see a lot of it that's, that's made of it. And he got two life sentences for a conspiracy for murder, racketeering, and violent crimes. Really bad things. You don't see it often, someone who's raised in Catholic school, right, yeah. to become this kind of person. It yeah. doesn't happen. I, I was raised in Catholic school. I went to Catholic school my whole life, too, and I've seen the kind of people. And you know what? You might have scared scare a little bit, but you don't see that, especially if you're an altar boy. I mean, that's yeah. an unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. He, he would become that kind of guy. He yeah. just recently died about a few years ago. Uh, I believe he had cancer or something in federal prison. But just want to show that out there, that sometimes it's not always – Guys like this guys who grew up in the street or grew up with broken homes that they go in that culture. Taco Bowman wasn't that kind of guy. Yeah. So if you want to read a little more about that, the psychology of that, I think that's also very interesting there. Uh, Ruben Doc Cavazos, no, he was a Sureño. And those who don't know, it's one of my books. I talk about the loyalty of foot soldiers with La M, the Mexican mafia, right? Yeah. You know, that's why Sur 13. Any, any, any street gang who puts a 13 hyphen next to their name, like MS-13, Masa of Tucha, Sur 13, Sureño 13. There's a host of them. That, that means they're loyal. They, they pay their alliance to the Mexican Mafia a lot because that's the wow. 13th letter of the alphabet, right? Yeah. That's the 13th letter of the alphabet, the M. Wow. So yeah, when, I didn't you, know when you see the M, so yeah. in the Mexican Mafia, their symbol is the black can with the M inside. Yeah. So you, 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 you see that, you know you're dealing with a gang member who's loyal or has pays respect to them. So this is why I say that because he was part of Sureños and those are foot soldiers. Yep. In other words, they give the orders, they enforce a lot in Southern California and, and beyond. They've ex they expanded all over the country now. They're not just in California. They've expanded, but he grew up in that culture. He later got recruited by the Mongols, rose up the rank and became the president of the Mongol nation, different culture. But yep. again, when I was reading, he, he didn't have a lot of respect for the old timers over there. He thought they were weak and soft. And they just want to drink a lot and party. He, yeah. he, they weren't feared guys. He wanted to be part of fear because he grew up in Sudan. And these yeah. guys were feared. It makes them often give orders to kill. You give orders to extort. They give orders. You enforce it because if not, they come after you. So he was part of that kind of culture. So now what are you doing with big drug traffickers? These are yeah. these are big. And he wanted them to be a fear organization. I guess he wanted to make sure <clears> they <throat> can take over the Hells Angels. Because that's a battle. Because yeah. California is a Hells Angels state. Their mind because the rocker says California, yeah. the lower rocker. If you put if you put the state on the lower rocker, that means that's your state, right? Yeah. And, and the same thing with these guys, Mongols. They put California. Uh oh, wow. Whose state is this? Mongols or or, or Hell's Angels? So these yeah. guys have been always feuding. 
And uh, he starts recruiting a lot of former Sureños like himself, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of these guys never owned a bike, never rode a bike, right? Yeah. They, they didn't know what a Harley was, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and they just had trucks. So it wasn't yeah. really a biker group. You know, he just wants to recruit people. But by, by, by being so reckless and fast and furious, right? Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four ATF agents were made full patch members. Wow. And, and, and just to cover their tail, they brought in, they need girlfriends, right? Girlfriends. So they brought four female ATF agents in. <laughs> so, so now you had eight in the yeah. organization. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Needs to say, it didn't end well for Dr. Vasas and, and, and a lot of Mongols. Well, I think over 60 some guys were indicted, hundreds of search warrants nationwide executed, lots yeah. of bikes seized, lots of guns, lots of drugs, right? It, yeah. it, it was a devastating blow to the Mongol nation back then, 2008. Uh, and, 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 and the reason why also that hurt him, why the club voted him out, because it triggered a war with the Mexican mafia because yeah. you're taking away their foot soldiers to go to our organization. Yeah. So well, then you got to pay us a tax, right? He didn't yeah. want to do that. He said, no, go pound sand. Well, that's a war they're not going to win because yeah. there's hundreds of thousands of members and it's a lot smaller with the Mongols. Yeah. And the Mongols, no, they didn't want to fight, you know, Lamy. Yeah. And so they want him out. So they voted him out and later he got indicted. But he later cooperated. He pled guilty because most guys who gets hit with racketeering charges, he was the first one. Normally the head of the organization it's the yeah. last one, right? He goes to trial. Who's the yeah. first one on board? Wow. First one. First one on board. <laughs> gets 14 years. That's unheard yeah. of. Wow. He's not in a Bureau of Prisons anymore either. By the way, he's not in a Bureau of Prisons anymore either. So those yeah. are things. And, and think it more interesting later with David Santian, Little Dave, which I talked about in my book and things and allegations of him cooperating also with the feds, with ATF. Operation Black Rain. Very interesting case. Uh, it's pretty much the end of Doc Cavazos and his reign, right? And, yep. and it gives a devastating blow to the Mongol nation, which is causing some problems in Florida now. Which is, yep. if your if your audience and viewers will look, uh, it looks like the pagans. When I was looking, reading, and talked to other people, that the uh, the pagans and Mongols have kind of have a, an alliance trying to take over Florida, which is an outlaw state. So watch wow. out for turf war there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Scott Bernstein. I did his show. I haven't seen that one. Great, great, great show he has. He did a, a great documentary on BMF. On, on stars and yep. on white boy rick also if you ever seen the movie white boy rick yeah I've and his seen documentary that. outstanding i did a show yeah. with him gangster and uh and jimmy also uh the uh the yeah. original gangster yes so i think it's a great show on a deck show and we talk about the, all the stuff with the one percenters too so a lot of great shows we talk about <clears> the same <throat> with uh crime entertainment yeah. with hollywood wade and other ones too gary jenkins great shows on that so those are pretty good things to look at in my books there on the one percenters hell i did one percenters Hells Angels, Outlaws, Mongol Nation, and uh, I'm thinking uh, maybe down the road, maybe do one also on the Pagans. We'll see. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll check that out. Uh, I've seen in the Pagans part in the One Percenters, yeah, had two ATF agents infiltrated. One became a sergeant of arms. Like, would, yeah. Wouldn't he have had to do some pretty bad shit while he is in there to move up that high? Right. Sometimes it's tricky. you got you got to yeah. play that line, right? Obviously, yeah. we're federal agents. Yeah, we we can't commit murder. Yeah, we 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 can you know kidnap people. So it's a fine line you got to play with gain information, doing things, and witnessing, and up to a point because if something really bad's yeah. going to happen, you got to contact law enforcement to, to stop it. Right? Yeah, you can't let someone kill somebody either. So it, it is very tricky situation, especially when you have people consuming a lot of drugs. Yeah. Sometimes you got to come up with a cover story why you can't do this. Maybe instead you just drink. Hey, my thing is just drinking. Maybe you say, hey, I'm on probation. I can't do that. So you got to be very creative. How you, and you have to think, these are things you got to think ahead. Is I want to be in a tricky situation. How do I bounce around? Because yeah. I am not a bad guy. Yeah. I'm just pretending to be one, right? Yeah. And I got to gain evidence to put these guys away. And and that's always when you know people offer you, hey, let's say for me, I did that, that one case for years, for two and a half years, in Hollywood, major uh, drug trafficker. And you said, hey, why don't we snore a line or something? You can test the products, see anything. They said, no, I just, you know, my thing is the guns. I make money on this. But, you know, yeah. you can't be snorting cocaine, right? Yeah. So you, you come up with a story of how to get around that. So yeah. you always get offers and stuff and things and or other other situations come up. You got to be quick on your feet. Yeah. You promise you got to be quick.